So now we'll show an example of the Lagrangian in action. We want to maximize f of x1, x2 is equal to x1 squared, x2, subject to h of x1, x2 is equal to 2x1 squared plus x2 squared plus 3, or is equal to 3. So that's our constraint. And here's the first thing we do. So first step. The first step is we check the constraint qualification. That is, we need to make sure that the gradient of h on this set does not vanish. So the gradient of h, of course, is equal to 4x1, 2x2. And if h of x1, x2 is equal to 3, so this will only vanish if both of these are zero, but on the set we obviously see that x1 and x2 can't both vanish, since if, uh, if they both vanished and we plugged it in here we would have h of x1, x2 would be h of zero, zero is equal to zero. Therefore, the gradient of h does not vanish. on the constraint set 2x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to 3. That's great. So the second step is introduce the Lagrange multiplier mu and form the Lagrangian. So our Lagrangian is going to look like script L of x1, x2, mu, which is the Lagrange multiplier, which is, it tells us how the uh, gradients are scaling. And this is going to be equal to, well, it's my function, of course, f. It'll be x1 squared, x2, minus mu times h minus c. So this will be 2x1 squared plus x2 squared minus 3. That's great. So that's the second step. You just form that guy after introducing the Lagrange multiplier. The third step is determine critical points of L of the Lagrange of the Lagrangian. So the critical points, of course, are the things that satisfy 0 is equal to dl dx1, which is going to be 2 x1 x2 minus 4 mu x1, which is equal to 2 x1 times factoring minus 2 mu. 0 is equal to partial eval with respect to x2 now is equal to x1 squared minus 2 mu x2. And our final condition is 0 is equal to 
partial with respect to mu, the Lagrange multiplier, which is equal to negative 2x1 squared minus x2 squared plus 3. Those are our constraints, and we have to figure out what are the possible functions or what are the possible points that satisfy that, right? So the first thing, so this is kind of a, a process of elimination to figure out what's going to happen. So the first thing we're going to think about is what does it mean for this equation to be satisfied, right? Well, if, so this is our first thing that we're going to tackle. If 2x1 times x2 minus 2 mu is equal to 0, well, I've got a product of two vectors, then either x1 has to be equal to 0, or x2 minus 2 mu is equal to 0, which is the same as x2 is equal to 2 mu. So now uh, we, have to, we have to check both of these potential outcomes, right? Because in, in both of these situations, I have the first constraint satisfied. The second constraint will then, the second and third will then change based on what happens here. So let's assume, so assume, assume first that x1 is equal to 0 then the second and third constraint or the second and third equation so this is equation one two and three the second and third equation become negative two mu x2 is equal to zero and negative x2 squared plus 3 is equal to 0. Thus, x2 is equal to plus or minus square root 3, and mu has to be equal to 0. So this equation implies that I have to have a non-zero x2, and therefore mu has to be 0 to satisfy the second equation. So those are the possibilities. Uh, so uh, we have, so what are the critical points that we get? We get 0, square root 3, 0, and 0, negative square root 3, 0 are critical. So those are critical points. Now we have to check this guy. So what if that is the case? Well, if x2 is equal to 2 mu, then the second and third equations become, what do they become? Right, so x2 is now 2 mu, so we have x1 squared minus 4 mu squared. So we have 0 is equal to x1 squared minus 4 mu squared. And the third equation becomes minus 2 x1 squared plus, or still minus, minus 4 mu square plus 3. So this is good. Well, that means for this to hold, we have to, to then have then, so for the first one, we have x1 is equal to plus or minus 2 mu. And in that case, we know what x1 squared has to be. So 0 is equal to 
minus 2 times 4 mu squared minus 4 mu squared plus 3. Well, that's of course going to be equal to negative 12 mu2 squared plus 3. Uh, and this implies that mu is going to be equal to plus or minus one half. So we have critical points in this scenario, which are well, x2, so it all it all kind of depends on what mu is. So if mu is plus one half, then we'll have that x1 can be either plus or minus one. So it's one, and of course x2 has to be one, one half. This is the situation where we put the negative sign on x1 instead. Now, if mu is negative a half, then we have, again, any choice for x. So we have this, minus 1, minus 1 half, and 1, 1, or negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 half. So we have six total critical points to check, right? So without a second order test, which uh, you know we we're not really going to do here, uh, we do exhaustive elimination of the six critical points. So we check all the critical points, uh, x and y. So f of, it turns out f of 1, 1. Uh, so this is 1, 1, and uh, that's a potential point, is equal to f of negative 1, 1. So these guys return the same thing, which is going to be 1. We have that f of 1, negative 1, from this guy, equals f of negative 1, negative 1, which is equal to negative 1. And we also have f of 0, comma, square root 3 is equal to f of 0, comma, negative square root 3 is equal to 0. And therefore we conclude, after doing this exhaustive search, uh, the max is... 1, 1, or negative 1, 1. And that's how we will solve a system like this. We form the Lagrangian, and we find out where its critical points are, and we evaluate.